Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how you can calculate the expected return and variance of portfolio returns when you're dealing with two risky assets. So suppose we're living in a world where there are two stocks, both are risky. One is called Supertech, the other is called Slomo. They're both risky because depending on what happens in the future, the returns on the stock can be different. And we're also given some probabilities with which we can expect these different states of the economy. Now, in a previous video, I have shown you how given these data, you can calculate the expected return on these two stocks and also the variance and the standard deviation of these stocks. Moreover, in a separate video, I've talked about how you can calculate something called covariance or correlation between these stock returns. So in this video, we are going to take these expected return and standard deviation and covariance and correlation numbers as given. And then we're going to ask ourselves, OK, what if we now constructed a portfolio that is invested partly in super tech and partly in slow mo and how we can calculate the expected return and standard deviation of the returns on that portfolio. So suppose we construct a portfolio whereby 40% of our wealth is invested in super tech and the remainder, which is 60%, is invested in slow-mo. If I asked you how much return would that portfolio earn in a depression, well, you can actually calculate that because if you take a look at depression, super tech is going to earn negative 37% and slow-mo is going to earn negative 9%. So because your portfolio is going to be invested 40% here and 60% here, you can say, you know what? I'm gonna get 40% exposure to this negative 37%. And then the remainder, which is 60%, so one minus 0 0.40, I'm going to multiply that by this negative 9%. And so that basically comes out to negative 20%. But this is only the return that you would get on this 4060 portfolio in a depression. But then there is also some possibility that you could end up in a recession, in which case super tech would give you negative 11% and slow mo would give you 15%. If somebody asks you what would your portfolio earn in that particular state of the economy, you can actually copy this formula with the control C and paste it here with the control V. Because basically, again, you'll have 40% exposure to this negative 11% and the remainder, which is 1 minus 0.4 or 60%, is going to be the, to this 15%. And so actually you can copy this formula and paste it for the rest of the states as well. And so these would be your portfolio returns in the different states of the economy. If somebody now asks you what would be the expected return on your portfolio, notice that expected return is simply you taking a look at the individual returns that you would get on your portfolio while accounting for the probabilities with which those different states of the world would occur. So basically, this involves you using the sum product function in Excel, where you say, let me take a look at the probability with which these different states of the world will occur, and then what would be my portfolio returns in those different states of the world. When you do this sum product calculation, basically this 5% gets multiplied with this negative 20, then this 25 with this 5, 40 with 10, 30 with 9, and then all these four products are summed up. And so when you do this math, you get 7%. Another simpler way would simply be to take a weighted average of the expected returns on your individual stocks. In other words, because you already know that SuperTech is going to give you an expected return of 10% and SlowMo is going to give you an expected return of 5%, these expected returns have already accounted for the different states of the world and their probabilities. And so all you have to do then is to say, you know what, in my portfolio, I will have 40% exposure to this expected return and 60% exposure to this 5%. Another way in which you could have gotten this 7% 
is by simply taking a weighted average of these two numbers where the weights would be the portfolio weights. So basically equal to 0 0.40 multiplied by this 10% and then plus one minus 0 0.40 into 5%, which is this cell reference right here to cell E9, which is the expected return of slow-mo. And so if you do this math, you get the exact same number, which is 7%. Now to calculate the variance and subsequently the standard deviation of portfolio returns, it turns out that there are again, two ways in which we can do this. The first method is the standard method of doing variance and standard deviation calculation, which says that, look, all you gotta do is that once you have individual return numbers, once you know what the expected value of those is, depending on the probabilities, you take a look at how an individual return is deviating from the mean, take the square of that and then multiply that with the probability. And so this is what that calculation would look like. I am first going to take a look at how one individual portfolio return is deviating from its expected return. So in a depression, the portfolio would yield negative 20% its expected return is 7%, and so this deviation would be negative 20 minus this 7%. I'm going to lock this with the F4 key, because once I do this, I can actually copy this formula and paste it through and through. Once I do this, then I'm going to square these deviations. All that involves is me saying equal to, taking this one deviation and then raising it to the power of two, and then of course I'm going to copy this and paste it through and through. The formula for variance simply says that you do a sum product of the probabilities and the squared deviations. And so that would be the variance of the portfolio. If I do a square root of this number right here, I get 6.65% and that would be the standard deviation of this portfolio. If you look carefully, you'll notice something interesting that the variance of the portfolio is less than the variance of the individual stocks. And for that reason, the standard deviation of the portfolio is less than the standard deviation of the individual stocks. Why is that? Well, because the covariance and the correlation between the returns of these two stocks is negative. They're negatively correlated, which means that when one goes up, the other one on average goes down. What that implies is that you cannot calculate the variance of the returns on the portfolio simply as the weighted average of the individual variances. With expected return, you can do that. And we did do that. I showed you that one way in which you can get the expected return on the portfolio is by taking a weighted average of the individual expected returns, like so 40% of 10% and 60% of 5%. What you cannot do is do the same for variance calculation is because by definition, that calculation will give you a number between 3.47% and 0.68, right? Because you're taking a weighted average of these two numbers. But as you can see that the variance of the portfolio can decline below these individual numbers for the same weights. Why? Again, because it's because of the negative covariance and correlation. So all that to mean that if you are to use the individual variances, of the stocks to calculate the portfolio variance, then the formula must account for the covariance number as well. And so it turns out there is a formula that we can use which does exactly that. In the context of this problem, it would look like this. So here, RP stands for the return on the portfolio. RST stands for the return on SuperTech. ST is abbreviating SuperTech. SM is abbreviating slow-mo. So RSM stands for the returns on slow-mo. And WST refers to the weight of SuperTech in your portfolio. And WSM is the weight of slow-mo in your portfolio. 
In our example, WST is equal to 40% and WSM therefore is 60%. And then VAR stands for variance. So all of this is saying that the variance of the returns on your portfolio is squared of the weight that is going into SuperTech, which means 40% squared into the variance of the returns on SuperTech. And then W square SM is 60% squared into the variance of the returns on SM, which is given 0.68%. And then two times the weight in super tech and weight in slow mo. So again, 40% and 60% respectively, and then times the covariance number. And this is the key because the covariance in our case is negative. You'll see that this entire number will become negative, And as a result, it will pull down the variance of the returns on the portfolio. And so if I were to use this formula instead, rather than all this math that I did on deviation and squared deviation, if I were given the variance of super tech and variance of slow-mo and also the covariance between them, then instead of doing this math, I could also calculate variance as 0 0.40. I'm going to square it and then I'm going to, so Put these in parentheses and this guy gets multiplied by the variance of the returns on super tech which is 3.47 percent then i'm going to do 0 0.60 raised to the power 2 and then i'm saying multiply it by the variance of the returns on slow mo which is cell referencing over here to cell e10 that's where the variance is and then i add to this two times 0 0.40, which is the weight in super tech, and 0 0.60, which is the weight in slow mo, and multiply all of that by this negative covariance of 0.75%. When I do that, I get the exact 0.44% that I got earlier, where I did the sum product of square deviations across the different states of the world. And of course, the square root of this is therefore going to give me the same answer for standard deviation. And so this is how you can think about and calculate the expected return and variance and standard deviation of portfolio returns. If you found this video useful, click the like button and subscribe to the channel. And feel free to ask any questions using the comment section. Happy learning.